This is the dark field. It's a pretty amazing place. Well, it's not really a place so much as a way of perceiving places. Dark field microscopy, in contrast to bright field microscopy, looks as different as night is today. Most of us are familiar with bright field microscopes. It's what we used in high school and college for most of us, and it's a white light shining through our slides up towards our eyes. When you switch to dark field, you simply oblate the center of the light. You black it out completely. So the light reaching the slide only comes from the sides of the light. This indirect light allows for soil life to be seen in a truer light. In fact, they look less two-dimensional and more 3D. Most of them are clear like opaque blue glass, much like plant roots look like. In fact, it all looks a lot more like deep interstellar space. And this is a place where light is dim and in restricted wavelengths. So in some sense, it's more true to the way they, the microbes, experience it. We get to see more realistic color on our organic matter. We get to see fungi in a new light. Nematodes appear ghostly, yet microbes appear to reflect or glow in different colors in this lighting. And some are much clearer to visualize. And then there's, then there's the twinkling. There is a magic and perhaps a message in the twinkling that we don't see in the bright field, but we do see in the dark field. The charm of the dark field may hold a future of automated spectrometry readings of the colors of our organic matter and even our microbes. The twinkling speed and movement could be translated into correlative health or vigor, or even be turned into a bacterial count and biomass calculation to run against the bright field calculations that we've gathered. Looking here at EM1 Pro from Terraganics, it's their effective microbes for human consumption. Absolutely incredible. I have it all the time. We can see the yeasts and some lactobacilli. They're very, they're very obvious, they're very large. There's way more yeast than lactobacilli. And this footage is of me hunting for Rhodocytomonas palustris, which is seven times to 20 times smaller than these yeast cells when it's present. And usually when it's present, it's always present at a much lower level than these other microbes. There's actually only a handful of images online of this microbe. In pure cultures, it forms rings and looks like a crown of rod-like snakes and turns red. The yeast cells here are clustering, but they're huge and rounded. My theory is that it forms those rings, those telltale rudisomonas palustris rings that we see on Wikipedia, on microbe wiki, and those are really the only pictures that we do see of it. They, they're coming from isolated purified cultures. So they do that only when they're on high enough mounts. So we can't use that as an indicator, telltale sign for, for finding them because that's going to be likely not going to happen unless they get to certain numbers. I'm brewing up some new EM right now with blue spirulina, which is supposed to bring in the purple non-sulfur bacteria in large amounts. So we will all see if I can visually characterize it from the next blue batch because it will be bright blue, I expect, unless something goes odd and the stain gets consumed by the EM, which is also a possibility. And then I'm going to DNA sequence that to show how prominent it actually was in our fields of view. It's something that has not been imaged in situ that I know of in soil. And it's only been imaged in a lab culture. Here is the EM in dark field. It's quite different. There's an immediate sense of gravity that is different from the bright field. And then when we flip to epifluorescence, it again changes how that appears as well. 
because of the oil condenser lens. We can see not all yeast fluoresce, but two to three in each clump usually do. It implies that those yeasts have ingested phosphorus-bearing minerals. Yeasts externally digest their foods like all fungi and then embody those foods until they divide and make more yeast. Just like bacteria, just like our milk or water kefir does, we always get more grains in the exchange for the sugar we add to the system. Speaking of which, I plan on sequencing the kefir grains once I get things growing. Dark field is another doorway into this world of soil, compost, plants, roots, and more. I invite you to join us as we journey into the dark field in regenerative soil microscopy. Launching right now on Kickstarter for about one more week and then it is over. So please share with your friends and anyone you know that would be interested. We need everyone to get involved. The database is going to be amazing, but even more amazing with every additional enthusiastic person included in it. I hope you will join us and support this campaign. Click the link and thank you. I'm Matt Powers. Grow abundantly, learn daily, and live regeneratively.